Greetings, Plows Tube. Today is Monday, August 27, 2018. Coming to you from Sunderland, Massachusetts, 7.41 p.m. Um, this is not going to be a very long video because basically um, I'm just going to do a flip throw. Flip, flip throw. What am I going to do? Flip through it and throw it across the room? A flip through of the Ultimate Cross Stitch Bird magazine. And I can't really do a flip through of these because these are nothing but patterns. But I don't know how many of you actually received the DMC newsletter, but I do. And um, occasionally I see something that catches my eye. And they had a set of six reproductions of the original collaboration between Therese Dillemont and the DMC family the DMC company um, of patterns created in the 1800s. These are all nothing but patterns. It was six, six books for uh, $40. They have a lot of alphabets in them, which is great. A lot of borders, a lot of simple motifs, um, a lot of little small pieces. Um, I thought I could at least read to you the history of DMC. And it's all written in French. Of course, there is an English translation. There's also a German and Italian translation as well as the French. But um, I'm not going to subject you to my god-awful French accent. Okay, so basically in 1746, in the, uh, the city of Mulhouse, which was at that point in part of Switzerland, um, there was a man named Jean-Henri Dolphus, and he created a fabric company that reproduced calico um, fabrics which were very big at the time um, and he produced some of the most respected uh, hand painted cloths in Europe um, there were definitely like the rage as far as fashion went um, hand painted cloth calico patterns things like that and his nephew Daniel or Daniel I suppose um, eventually took over the company and added his wife's name to it and it became Dolphus Mieg et Compagnie of uh, DMC and at that point they went from just making fabric into um, making the calico fabrics into just spinning regular cotton and doing weaving um, so then after that his descendants as he passed down the company as the company passed down through the family um, added sewing and embroidery threads to the calico hand-painted fabrics and the spun cotton fabrics that they were already making and so by 1841 they had gotten into the um, embroidery threads and so eventually that became such a big part of the DMC company that that spun off into its own thing it was all the fabrics and threads until 1879 and then the um, company branched off and just became DMC Threads. Um, and at this particular time, um, one of the descendants of Jean Henry met a woman named Teresa de Delmont, who was Viennese, and um, she decided that she was going to settle in France. So she ended up in Alsace, which anybody who knows anything about French geography knows that's the, the region of France next to Germany. Um, she created an embroidery school. And as such, she created all these little patterns to teach her students with. And eventually she began collaborating. She um, created, she wrote an encyclopedia of fancy work that was published in 1886 when she was uh, not even quite 30 years old her embroidery encyclopedia was published and um, eventually she did the collaborative work with DMC where she created patterns for them they would put them in booklets and sell them for her with their threads and she and part of what she got out of it was you know she had her, her pattern sold and made money that way and what they got out of the collaboration was she recommended to only use DMC thread when you stitched her patterns um, so they did these collaborations and um, another book that she that she had a lot of success with she created the embroiderers alphabet um,
So when she passed away in 1890, DMC decided to keep publishing her patterns and reprinting her patterns as a tribute to the collaboration they'd had with her, you know, for decades. So um, they continued publishing and republishing many of her books. And um, so in that same spirit, the current DMC company has decided to reprint Therese Delmont's patterns from the 1800s. Um, and these apparently are a very big collector's item amongst DMC faithful. Um, and there's six books. There, Like I said, there's a lot of little motifs. There's definitely a lot of alphabets, which was the reason why I wanted these, because I don't have any alphabet patterns. Um, and I was thinking about it because I'm doing a tribute to Coach Gorham. Um, let me know in the comments below if I've mentioned that, and if not, I will talk to you about that in my next Floss Tube video. But I wanted to put in loving memory Paul Gorham, 1960 to 2018 on there, and um, I don't have any alphabet books. So now I have six of them, and they have a lot of different alphabets, which would be appropriate for all kinds of pieces, all kinds of personalization. Um, there's definite, there's some black work, there's a really cool black work here with bees which now that, you know, the plights of bumblebees is kind of in the social consciousness that makes those patterns really cool. Um, you know, different motifs, uh, different borders. That looks like there's one of dragonflies here. Um, this one seems to be a, a book that's nothing but like nature. So there's some koi and some fish. Um, so, you know, a lot of little motifs. If you're just looking for something really different, like this one's got birds in it. And a, a, oh, my gosh. It's got a fox. Can I just show this real quick for Danielle? Because I know she'll squeal when she sees it. Look at that fox right there. On the, well, the left of, the left to you, but the right, the right, or the left. The right in the book, but the left to you. Look at that. So that's the kind of thing these books have. Go ahead and sue me, DMC. I don't got any money. You won't get anything from me if you do. But um, this one's apparently nature, and there's a couple of cool roosters in here and a turkey, things like that. So, you know, I could see some of these patterns being nice for, like, fingertip towels if you were going to make things, or if you wanted to monogram fingertip towels, there's plenty of alphabets. Um... So these are really cool. Like I said, it's six of the original reprints of this is her original um, embroidery patterns. Um, kind of a very cool collector's item. And I think I have, I think I'm going to have a lot of use for some of even the little motifs. Um, so yeah, this was definitely worth 40 bucks for, you know, a part of DMC history. I mean, I think there's that too, you know, DMC collaborated with Therese Delmont and um, she was actually a very successful embroiderer and publisher. So, you know, I can't really show you anything out of these, but they're definitely worth it if you're interested in a historical piece of DMC. Um, you know, I've only recently got it, gotten started in using specialty threads. So DMC has been my go-to for pretty much most of the 25 years I've been stitching. So, um, and plus, I studied French in high school and college. And I guess I, I knew it well enough on our 10th anniversary to be able to speak it passably enough in Montreal when we went on vacation that I had, well, I think she was trying to be polite, but I had one woman offering us the residential rate at the... Um, Olympic Stadium there when we were going to go do the touristy thing because she thought I was a resident. Trust me, if you heard me speak French, you would know I was not Canadian. <laughs> you would know that I'm a Southern American trying to speak French with the Southern American accent. So, but anyway, those books are really cool. I like the history. I like the fact that they started making calico fabric and then they got into weaving cotton fabric and then they got into the threads and then the threads became so big that became a separate part of the company and then they met this really famous embroiderer and she published, she, um, they published her embroidery uh, patterns in exchange for a don't stitch these with anything other than DMC endorsement. So I um, thought that was cool, but can't show you too much of those because they're all they're nothing but patterns um 
So anyway, the real reason I'm doing this flip through where I can actually do a flip through is I recently was at Barnes and Noble and I came across this. Now, anybody who's watched a floss tube video of mine before knows I'm an avid bird watcher. So when you're going to come by and cross stitch with birds, I picked it up, flipped through it, and there are a lot of really cool things in here. And I ch double checked with Danielle because I wanted to make sure she was not she was not going to do a flip through this, but she doesn't get ultimate cross stitch. So I figured I'd take a page from her book and show you some of these. Uh, the first cross stitch set we have here is by Leslie Tier, and it's called Birds of Beauty, and it's a coaster bookmark and it looks like a journal cover but you could just stitch it as a regular like frameable piece it's these peacocks aren't those cool my mother says that when I was like a toddler we lived in an apartment next door to a farm that had a peacock and I swear I don't remember that I was too young to remember that but she said they were loud that they were actually quite obnoxious birds then Leslie Tierra also designed this majestic peacock, which if I could be convinced that my eyes could survive fabric this dark, this would be really pretty. Although I think I might do it like, I think you'd almost have to do it on something dark because to make the colors stand out and to make it look as striking as it is. Is that not beautiful? And then it also uses beads, all those little dots or beads. And I've been wanting to make something for my acupuncturist, uh, just for all the help she's given me over the years. And I do have a crane, like an oriental crane. And since acupuncture is basically Chinese medicine, I was thinking maybe doing that one. But I don't know. This peacock's kind of nice for that, too. And I like that it uses the gold beads. I just don't know. Now, this was one of the patterns that sold me on this magazine. This is Sharon Wasilev, Paisley Peacock. Is that not gorgeous? I love those colors. It is so, and, and it speaks to me because I like stitching, well, you wouldn't exactly call Paisley geometric, but I like stitching those little kinds of shaped motifs, if that makes sense. So that is beautiful. I, that was one of the ones that sold me on this magazine. I could totally see myself stitching that, although I would probably use a hand-dyed fabric. Oh, and yes, I did get a manicure. I remember in one other floss tube video, I think I mentioned that I chew my nails. I know, nasty habit, shouldn't do it, too old to do it, but I do it when I'm stressed. And I figure twofold, I wanted my nails to look nice for the first game last Saturday. And I figured too, if I keep these on long enough, I mean, you obviously can't chew these, right? So if I just break myself of the habit of being stressed out and put my fingers in my mouth, maybe when I have them taken off, it'll stick, you know, kind of like a cold turkey thing. But these are, it's really cool. I can't remember the, it's, I can't remember the brand of nail polish they used. And you'll never be, well, maybe you can kind of see, see how it's kind of got like that, I don't know if you can see how it's got that stripe in it, where like when the light hits it, it looks like it's got a stripe. It's called Cat Eye Nail Polish, and they have like, the brand of nail polish this is has like 20 different colors. You can get anything from like blue to green to dark red. And this was like the closest I could find to our school colors. And it's called Cat Eye because it's basically, well, you know how a Cat Eye gemstone looks with like the stripes through it. But it's basically a magnetic nail polish, and what they do is when they put the nail polish on, when it's still wet, they hold the magnet over it, and then some of the particles move to give the, the lighter color the stripe. I actually think around the holidays, there's a, the real pretty like dark green version of this I might get, but hopefully by the holidays I will not be chewing my nails anymore and I can have my own, my own uh, manicure painted, but... It's a means to an end. I wanted nice looking nails. I don't have them as of yet. So, yes, but I do have a manicure. Um, the next pattern is by Susan Bates. It's called Regal Kingfisher. This is not my favorite pattern in the magazine, but it would be nice if you know someone who is into collecting china or if they just like kingfishers. Not my favorite pattern. Now this next one is beautiful. I love this. And I'm not sure what it is about this that speaks to me. It's by Maria Diaz and it's called Springtime. 
and it's just a little bird perched up here on cherry blossoms. But I think it's just so delicate, and I think I like the fact that it's a round, you know, it's got the round, like the little bit of the sky, and the, the cherry blossoms are really delicate too. I like that finish as a pillow, but that's not something I would ever accomplish. Because I need a sewing machine like I need another hole in the head. Because if I get a sewing machine, I'm going to want to learn how to quilt and do all this other stuff. And I don't need another hobby. The, one I've, the ones I've got are driving me crazy enough. So that one was kind of pretty. Then there's this one. This one is another Leslie Tear. It's a clock. It's called Time, uh, what is it called? time to Stitch. And it's got little birds. It's not going to focus. 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 Nah. I need a better webcam, I think, is my thing. I may have to do that if I'm going to keep making these videos. Um, so then this is Woodland Birds, designed by Deborah Page. And they're little greeting cards. And actually... I don't know if I would stitch any of these, but they're kind of fun. There's cards in here later on that I like better, but um, just some different. So there's that. I like the idea of stitching gift cards, but I don't I don't know that I like those. Now this I really like. This is called Flutter and Fly by Fiona Baker. You could do these together as it's shown here, or you could do them separately. You could probably make them as greeting cards. I like the cages, although I don't like the idea of caging birds because it seems cruel that creatures that are supposed to fly would be in cages, but I really don't like the idea of bird cages, which is the only reason why I would never have a pet bird. I would love to have a pet bird of some kind, but it just seems cruel. Their nature is to fly, and you're sticking them in a cage. I don't know. I don't know. I love parakeets and birds, you know, like tame birds, but it just seems wrong. Now, these are pretty. This is called Golden Greetings. It's by Sharon Wasilov again, and I think these are beaded. Let me look at the pattern. They're either beaded or gold braid. Yeah, it's Krynik number four gold braid and Mill Hill seed beads. Um, but you could use Petite Treasure Braid, I'm sure you probably have an easier time. But those, uh, these I really like, the bird cages. And you could just stitch those and leave the words off of them. But I really like that thinking of you one. Because I've noticed that they, when you go to buy cards, there are like, and you go even into a stationery store, it's all thank you notes and invitations and whatever happened to just a blank thinking of you card. Those are the cards I want the most because usually when I send a card, unless it's someone's birthday, you know, or I'm sending a thank you note, I want to just, you know, write somebody a card. And I like the idea of blank notes. Now, these are cute. I really like this one up top. This is called Bright Beauties by Susan Bates. Little birds on teacups. I really like this one, a blue and green bird. Although I like that little cockatoo on the... I don't know. That's an interesting combination. Birds and teacups. I kind of, I really like that one for some reason. Of course, it's got the how to make a French knot. Uh, there's love is in the air, but it's mostly a pattern page. Skip that one. Now this one is cute. This would look cute on a pillow too, like the other one. This is a Maria Diaz one called Little Quackers. Two little baby ducklings. I like the round shape of that one too. Although I swear, last time I went to UMass and I was taking a walk down by the pond, ducks are not generally, at least the ones that are tame on campus, they'll come right up to you. They don't care. I think they knew their picture was being taken though. Next we have Jenny Barton designed Lay a Little Egg and she created egg cozies with little roosters on them. And I know, like, in Britain, the semi-boiled eggs at breakfast are kind of a thing, and you get the, and you crack the top open, and you eat them with toast points. I don't know. I don't know if I could eat a half-runny egg. Never tried it. I mean, like, what, what's the worst that could happen? It would be gross, and I'd never do it again. But I like the little roosters just for, in general for different motifs. Roosters always make me think of my grand. 
She died in 2000 at the age of 86. But she loved roosters and she decorated her kitchen with roosters and hens. So anytime I see a rooster, I think of her. Now, I'm not sure about this one. It's definitely interesting. It's called Snow Geese of Tuscany by Carol Thornton. And it's, I don't think I would stitch this, but it's kind of different. And it's very pastel and kind of like a um, impressionist type painting. I mean, I like that house, but I just, I'm not sure I like that one. But to each to his own, if that would be something you would be interested in. Oh, uh, we have another Susan Bates plate called Vibrant Hummingbird. I think I like this one better than the other one, only because the, the bird is a little more dynamic. You know, it, it looks like it's flying and it's a little more dynamic. And I love those orange flowers in there. I think that one's prettier than the other one. Still not saying I would stitch that, but, you know, I might to hang in my kitchen to change up from coffee patterns. Now, this is the other one that sold me besides that Paisley Peacock. This is called Island Delights by Amanda Butler, and I am so someday stitching this one. It, I could actually stitch this for a friend of mine who lives in Florida on the Space Coast. She's a NASA attorney, and she um, lives on Merritt Island. Is this not, I mean, it looks like a postcard. That is so freaking awesome. I don't know what my favorite part of this is. Is it the bird or is it like, I love like the orange and the, the, the drink there with the straw and the, the orange and the big hibiscus. And a lot of this part up here too is all half stitches. So that would move pretty quickly. Like the background with the mountain. I've never seen a flamingo except on TV. It says, um, where's the part that I wanted to read to you about what she said about the piece? I love that, though. I love how it looks like a postcard. Oh, it says, um, We love the details in the foreground of this design. The cocktail orange and plants all create the feel of a tropical paradise. Each of those elements has been defined using backstitch in different colors, while the background remains backstitch free. This is so the ocean overhanging trees and the mountain backdrop blend together to give the picture perspective. So I love that. That is awesome. Oh, and we got Doreen Jones. Of course, those of you who watch Danielle's patterns know she's quite the animal stitcher. I absolutely adore this one. It's called Flight of Fancy. I love the one in the middle here, the, the parakeets. I even like the little lovebirds. Is that not, that's not just so cute. And I love the colors in that, green and blue. They're actually technically budgies, but I don't know. Are budgies what British people call parakeets? Or are they a completely different bird altogether? I'm not sure about that. And we have another Doreen Jones set of greeting cards called Birds of Paradise. I'm not sure. The colors are a little weird, but you could always... I think if I was going to stitch one, I would stitch that because I love that black, with the uh, yellow and orange on that black fabric, but I don't know. I'm not sure about those. And then, let me see... Oh, I really like this piece again, like the other one with the cherry blossoms. This is Susan Bates' Feathered Friends. And I think what really makes that pop is the uh, fabric. It's kind of a pale green. And I would probably use, picture this plus serene, um, which is a nice pale green. But look at that. And I love how delicately it's framed. It's just like three friends hanging out, shooting the breeze. I love the colors, especially the blue one. I really like that. I would totally stitch that. So you can see why I was obsessed with flowers, I mean with birds as I am, that I would. Um, the alphabet is by Jimmy Bartman. It's called Tropical Twist. And I'll show you the one little brief picture. It's basically like parrots and things like that. Um, different birds, mostly like tropical birds. Then Lucy Heaton designed Pelican and Friends 
but that's not in my pattern, so I can't show you that. Oh, these guys, let me see if I can show you this without showing you the pattern. It's Cozy Owls by Jane Schofield. Those are so cute. I always think of my goddaughter and her family because her dad loves owls. Aren't they cute? I love that one that has the scarf and it's like, Ooh. I don't think I look that cute in the winter time. I wish I could. And then there's another little three, the three owls. Like I would make fingertip towels for Dan and Diane with the little three owls on it. Those are so cute. I love those. I would totally stitch any of those. Now these are cards I would totally stitch and I've actually decided that if I do stitch them I might do the black work with some of my um, variegated thread because that would look cool too. But look at these. Now these are by Leslie Tier and it's called Black Work Beauties. I love every single one of these. I don't have any trepidation about saying I would stitch those like I do some of the other cards. I love that tulip. That I think the tulip would be the first one I would stitch. But I like all those. It's cheerful. And I like black work because it doesn't take quite as long as cross stitch. I mean, I know people say, oh, it's just back stitch. I hate back stitch. But, you know. And then Doreen Jones created some little motifs called Up in the Sky. And let me see if I can show you that. Just some little teeny things you could use to decorate all manner of stuff. I love that little bird that's like, oh boy, that's the way I look before coffee. And then a birthday card that says, hope your day is a hoot, and of course it's now. And I like this little one here, this little bird with the music notes. And I really like, I mean, this is a solidly stitched background, but I really like this little dooley bopper here with the background with the yellow with the flowers. There's a lot of little cute birds here. There's one that's got a, bird, a birdhouse and it says, Happy New Home. And then there's another one. There's an owl holding up a sign that says, Hi, that I would totally stitch. Um, just to make it into a card. A couple of little border type things. I would use those. A couple of these you could probably make into ornaments. Like I could stitch the little yellow, the yellow and red one that I just showed you on plastic canvas or perforated paper, make a little ornament out of it. I like those. And then I absolutely adore this alphabet, although, and I may have to stitch a D and send it to Danielle, but I don't know what I would use this alphabet for, but it is so cute. I'll show you. It's um, designed by Lucy Heaton, and it's called Sweet Tweets. And see how they've got, it's got like birdhouses and flowers and birds. I would totally use that alphabet. I just don't know what for. But I guess that's half the fun of cross stitch is figuring out things. I might have to stitch the D for Danielle because it's cool. I like it. And then just send it to her so that she could do it as a, um, I don't know, cubby finish or something. I don't know. Oh, that's cool. One of the ideas says, why not use the bird house alphabet to stitch a pretty sign for the garden or a, a garden shed and gift it to a king gardener? Sadly, I, I don't have the ability to be a gardener. We had a community garden here at the apartment, but they never kept it up and they never like... You know, what they should do is go in at the end of the gardening season and plow it down and, like, till it so that you can get up all the weeds. Because people out there grow cucumbers and squash and sunflowers, and those are the kind of things that they will take over if you don't get rid of them. So I just gave up. Now, this is the last. I mean, I tried planting flowers a couple times, and the flowers I could grow were beautiful, but it just it was so overgrown. You know, the pumpkins and the squash and the sunflowers and all that kind of stuff and tomato vines took over the area so they don't keep it up enough for it to be a true. And I've tried tomatoes and tomatoes are boom or bust with me. You either get tomatoes or you end up with blossom and rot, which I've had the past couple of years. I've just tried to do like a trellis tomato in a, in a container type thing. And every year I think I'm going to do tomatoes. It turns out to be a rainy, crappy summer and rain will destroy tomatoes. 
too cold will destroy tomatoes, too hot will destroy tomatoes, too much rain, which gives them blossom end rot, which basically turns the bottom of the tomato black, and you can't eat it. So I've just about given up on gardening until I have a home of my own, but that is a cute idea for those. I am so going to stitch this and hang this in my hallway near my washer dryer. It's by Lucy Heaton. It's called Little Helpers. Is that not the most adorable cross stitch? Two little birds putting clo clothes on the line. Oh my god, I love this. I'm so going to do that and hang that in the hallway next to the dryer. The washer dryer, because that is just adorable. I love that. So cute. And then she's got it broken down into a couple of little motifs. And the little motif here with the bird, she's got the bird with the sock just as its own. <coughs> Excuse me, let me hold this up where you can see it. The little bird with the sock there, she's got that as its own separate motif. Oh my gosh, that is so cute. I like what, what uh, the editor of the magazine said. Stitching is the one time when we get to really unwind and relax and completely forget about any housework. Lucy's design, Lucy's laundry design is the perfect design to put your feet up with as you stitch happily away. And then I guess if this, this is your kind of thing, this is kind of cool. Um, Bird Song by Susan Bates. Um, it makes a... It makes a diary cover, like if you were going to do a stitching journal and you wanted to stitch the cover for it. I think I would just stitch that and put some other writing in it. Now that I've got all the DMC books with all the, the uh, alphabets, I could stitch my own thing in there. Now these are stinking awesome. Um, these are by Doreen Jones, birthday cards. I would stitch any of these and just take the age out. They're like milestone cards, but you could take the age out and just stitch the, the card. Look at these. That is freaking awesome. Look at those colors. I mean, who wouldn't want to get something that cheerful? I actually like the 100-year-old card, but you could take the ages out and just stitch the cards. Those are so colorful. I love their tails. Yeah, I would stitch any one of those and just leave the age off of it. Or, you know, if it was a milestone birthday. Those are so cool. I like it when the charting editor says, minus the ages, these cards would work well as thank you cards. Yeah, you could use them for anything, even a thinking of you card. And then we have, now these are so adorable, more cards by Doreen Jones again called Winter Wonderland. I would just stitch these as ornaments, honestly. Bird houses in the winter time. And if I had enough time and energy and actual life to do it, I would stitch these as Christmas cards, but not happening. You're gonna get a boxed Christmas card from me if you get one, and that's about all you're gonna get out of me this year. But I love those. I would totally stitch those. Doreen said, I love birdhouses. I love little birdhouses, so I thought I'd create individual designs perfect for cards. I added snow, pretty lights, and baubles to give them a winter wonderland feel. And then Doreen Jones uh, designed two little, let me see if I can do this without showing you the pattern there. Put my hand over the pattern, but budgie buddies. Are, somebody please tell me, are budgies parakeets? Is that just what British folks call them? Because they look an awful lot like parakeets to me, but I don't know if... And then, of course, you have, you know, your how to stitch and all that if you need a cross stitch. But there's a lot in here I would stitch. A few things I wouldn't, but for the most part, there's 200 charts for nine pounds, which is, what, like $11. So I would totally stitch those. Um, so hope this is something you're interested in. Like I said, it's birds, it's cross stitch, so you know I'm there. Um, and I'm looking forward to delving into some of the um, motifs and things in these books and using the alphabets for certain things. And when I do, of course, you know that I will show you on my Instagram account as well as here on my YouTube channel. Um, 
that is really all I have to share. So until next time, I wish you happy stitching and a happy life. And I'm not sure when I'll be back because I'm going to be out of town for Labor Day weekend because I'm going to Boston to the Boston College game. Um, but then week after this coming weekend, Bill will be out of town. So maybe I can get a video made then and show some progress. Um, but as it is, I've talked your ear off for a half an hour. And so I sign off here. See you soon.